So we are orchardists in Hawke's Bay and we've been here for 27, 28 years. So we grow apples for export to 68 countries throughout the world. It takes 12 months to grow an apple. So, you know, we start out now in the background, you might see we've got little buds. So they are going to be, in six weeks time, they'll be flower, then we have fruitlets, and then by six months time, that'll be an apple. So I dare say we start off by making sure that we've got the health nutrition of the tree correct. You know, then we need to prune and we prune for light because what we're trying to do is get that bud to capture as much light as we can. And then from there, we make sure that we keep the pests and diseases away from it. Then we need to make sure we've got the right number of fruit on the tree so we can get the best quality of fruit. So that means we then got to go through and thin the damage, the excess off it to make sure that you know we do have the optimum product that we can export overseas and be proud of. We're very fortunate here in Hawke's Bay that underneath us we have a huge aquifer. The Regional Council will issue us with consents for certain amounts of water. What they're looking at trying to do and everyone's trying to do is customise your consent so you end up using enough water or allocated enough water for your need and for your crop. We've installed a harvest system. So the harvest system allows us to not only record the wind direction and wind speed, it monitors and records temperature, which is important for us. Like from the apple industry, we need something like 700 degrees below 10 degrees for winter chill units. So we can monitor that because sometimes we use some chemistry to break the buds early or to delay the buds. And that's based on the number of hours chill units that we have. So that tells me our annual chill units, and I can compare that to other years so I can get the timing right in that respect. And also attached to that is tensiometers, which are soil moisture readers. So that just records just the, the level of moisture in the ground at 300 and 500 mils below the ground. We manage our irrigation using that system too. So it gives me a lot of data on a, at a lot of different times throughout the year. And also it's historical, so it can record, it can tell me how much rain we had last year, how much we've had each month, how much we've had by every 50 minutes. So it records the data every 50 minutes and I can just download that anywhere in the world on my phone. And it can just tell me exactly what's happening here in the orchard. If I know it's gonna get cold and you can judge it, there's dew point calculations on that, which really predicts how cold it's gonna get. I can then set the windmill to go is for frost protection. It brings the inversion layer down, which is slightly warmer than the ground temperature. We set them to come on at about 0.8 degrees. The irrigation system that we have can come on at about 0.8 degrees and the flowing of the water warms up the ground by about two degrees. So it just protects the buds at springtime from, from frost because if they get frosted and they freeze, they, they die. You know, they are very susceptible. So that's a critical time of the year that we need to monitor the weather. So those systems gives me that option on to react. You know, so it's a matter of knowing what information you want and how it is going to help your business. And that's kind of difficult to do until you know what is important. When we started, we, you know, we were completely foreign to the industry, had no idea. Looking from the outside, we go, God, that looked easy. If they can do it, we can do it, you know. Until you get involved, you don't know. But then we used to say, well, we want a technology for our industry. And it was like, where do we start? Who do you talk to? What do you do? And with the like of what Digital Boost is doing, you can go to one platform and say, okay, where do I start? What do I look at? And the information will be there for them. 